Hello, and welcome to Twin Tigers Data. My name is Thomas Kistner, and let's get started. Today, we'll be specifically talking about handing out treasure to your party and also the negatives of overhanding and underhanding treasure. Okay, so first off, what's the difference between experience and treasure? Well, firstly, experience teaches your players how exactly sorry, lets your players get better at what can do for their characters. However, treasure is the cash, gold, art objects, and magical items that they find on an adventure. Now, what exact now also a problem with this is what exactly a different treasure types are. For example, what is the difference between an individual whore treasure and a hoard treasure? Well, individual treasures are actually treasures that are only for a small group, i.e. an orc party or a small hunting group or a major enemy that's not like a dragon. However, treasure hordes are going to be more like your bosses or armies, dragons, beholders, Treasure Happy Beast, uh, the Dragon Cult, who is assembling a amount of gold for their queen. Don't hand out too much or too little. The side effects of handing out too much, the party buys things that make them even more powerful than what you want. Uh, they own more things to kill your enemies faster, and it pisses you off on everything that they essentially can do. For example, I this was an adventure I was running, and I ended up rolling and just handing out whatever the uh, game, the tables said for me to hand out. In consequence, they were in a major magical city where you could buy something called a rock. And this is spelled R-O-C. Now, rocks are giant flying birds that can essentially... And in the 3.5 version, there was a picture of them picking up a dolphin to fly off and eat. Now, the opposite. the They can become annoyed with you. Uh, they kill more people so that then they can get better cash. And... Even and eventually they can't even be able to become able to afford even the most basic of items. So your players are essentially just trying to get cash and becoming murder hobos in the process. What should you hand out? Well, what does the mo what does it claim that it can hand out? The monster says that it can hand out. For example, what does a group of or what might a group of orcs possibly be holding on them? What challenge rating does it have? Yes, this is a major part because not only does the challenge rating affect how much experience the characters may get, however, it also tells you which tables to roll on. As you can see here, there are multiple tables with different numbers on challenge ratings. The numbers are specifically 0 to 4, 5 to 10, 11 to 16, and then 17 and up. And what does the table say they get from you randomly generating your uh, treasure? Now, we're going to be randomly generating a table. So, what we're going so uh, I'm going to show you how exactly to specifically build it. Now we're going to be building specifically a CR15 for both the individual and the hoard treasure to show you the difference between them. Now, what you're going to need is something called a D percentile. Now, this specifically is 2D. 10s. However, there is a specific die if you want to get real technical for one of them. One of the D10s is a, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll bring it as close as I can. If you notice, it has a number and then a zero after it, after the number. 
Now, this number represents the tens placeholder. However, if you roll, say, 100, the way that you know you rolled 100 is if it says 0, 0, and then your regular D10, which is the one right here, will say 0 as well. Now, our first number is going to be a 16. So, for our individual treasure hoard, for CR 16, CR 15 with a 16, they are going to get a total of 46 times 100 silver pieces and 1D6 times 100 gold pieces. Which So you pull out your 46. These are your D6s, essentially every single gaming die that you have ever played with prior to D&D. And for silver pieces, they are going to get a grand total of 900. So that is a little bit less than the average, which it says is 1,400. And then we're going to roll the gold piece die, and they're going to receive 500. So where they l miss out on the gold, sorry, the silver pieces, they get more of on the gold pieces because it says that you get 350 on average for gold pieces. And this is all that they get for an individual treasure hoard. So not a lot of items, however, they get plenty of cash to buy more stuff. Now we're going to jump to a treasure hoard, challenge CR 15. All right, we got an 86, which means that they are going to receive 2d4 worth of art objects costing at 750 gold pieces each. And we're going to roll on a magic items table for 1d4 number of times. Now a d4 is one of these little bad boys. Now they come in two different ways. This one, the number is at the point. Other ones you'll actually get a number down here at the bottom. So let's first roll for how many art objects the players are going to get. In this one, they're going to receive six art objects. Usually you, the average, it says, is going to be five. So they get more than average uh, with the art objects. Now for the number of magical items we're going to roll for. So we're going to be rolling for three magical items total. And for, in terms of coins, they are going to actually be receiving the following. 46 of gold pieces times 1,000, and then 5d6 times 100 platinum pieces. So let's see. For platinum pieces, they're going to be receiving 13, 17, 2,000 platinum pieces. So we're 250 over average. Now, I believe that they're actually doing this by one, uh, dividing it in half and then adding 0.5 to all of it. That's how they say that your that's what their average is. So they're going to receive 4,000 platinum pieces, sorry, 2,000 platinum pieces, 16, 18,000 gold pieces, 4,000 over the uh, number of average gold pieces for this. And then we said that they are going to be receiving, I believe we said uh, six art objects. So in total so far, we have about 38,000 gold pieces, six times 750, 42, 42,500 gold pieces. Now, for magical items, you're going to jump to a specific table that it tells you. In this example, we are jumping to table H. And we are going to take our percentile die, once again, and roll three times to figure out what this party is going to get. So, a 57 is going to get them an animated shield. A 72 is going to get them a figurine of wondrous power, Obsidian Steed. And finally, 
a six is going to get them a plus three weapon of your choice to build. Now, what exactly are these? Well, magical items are on different ratings, and you can find the, the rating system inside the uh, book Xanathar's Guide to Everything in the back where it starts talking about magical items. However, these three magical items are very much on a major scale. Now, what exactly is a major magical item? Well, major magical items are items that you can use and they don't have uh, a certain number of uses or the uses that they do have will recharge a certain number depending on what you roll each time per day. Now, when you're handing out this, these art objects and also the uh, magical items, if you have four players then one of them needs to consciously make the decision not to take up the magical item. However, the rest of the cash, everybody is going to get 10,625 gold pieces worth of art objects, gold pieces, and platinum pieces. Make sure you only hand it out, though, to the players that survived unless the party is willingly going to be casting a Revival, Revivify, or similar spell on the dead companions. All right, DMs, please remember to take all of the things that I talked about in this video seriously, and players, remember, it is very hard to randomly generate and also keep up with everything that we start talking about inside our games. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, if you want to share my awful, no good, very bad videos, go ahead. I don't care. Honestly, I'd prefer if you do. I'd like to get over seven subscribers right now. Thank you for watching. Please remember to game safe, have fun, and adios. I'll see you next time.